Oh, it's uh, it's been a long time now, hasn't it? Well, uh, I guess it's time for another video now, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, I know it's been a long time since the last video, but I'm back. We got, we're doing more, do more dumb computer things, as expected. So, uh, today we're going to be looking at the NEC GT100. Uh, now what's special about this? Well, longtime viewers of the channel may remember uh, that this computer used to be uh, my first DOS machine, uh, which I think was like three years ago now, maybe four. Gosh, it's been a long time. But anyways, uh, it served me well as a DOS machine, as expected, because it's way overpowered. Um, however, I eventually retired this in favor of more period-accurate hardware. So this machine's kind of just been sitting around doing nothing, so I decided to kind of restore it to how it would have came from the factory uh, to sort of make this video. So now, what is this video? What are we actually going to do with this computer? So when people sort of talk about, you know, vintage computing, I guess, uh, they tend to talk about, you know, all the good hardware, you know, you know, all the high-end hardware, because that's fun, you know, all that's fun, and because it, it performs really well for the time, but people don't really talk about, you know, like, what people actually had back in the day. You know, this computer, as we'll soon see, is uh, much more representative of what somebody would actually own back in 1999, because that's when this computer was made. So what we're going to do is we're going to play some games on this and kind of see how it performs, because it really isn't a gaming computer, but this was probably all you had back in the day, so you made the most of it. So for our CPU, we have the AMD K62 with 3D now, uh, which is clocked at 450 megahertz, which you can see the sticker. You can see the sticker right there. So the K62, it wasn't a terrible CPU for the time. You know, I think it's better. I think it was better than most Celerons of the day, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, it would have been decent for like you know general productivity, I guess, kind of you know office type work. Uh, not really for gaming, though. So despite the name 3D now, sort of implying that it'd be good for 3D stuff, it's not really, because the K62 uh, didn't have a very good floating point unit, and most 3D applications, including 3D games, make a lot of use of the floating point unit. So weak FPU means weak gaming CPU. It's still not terrible. Like I said, you could have had worse. You could have had a lower clocked K62. But you know, this is pretty much a, this is a pretty general budget CPU that you'd expect to find at the time. So despite it already not being a great gaming CPU, uh, it's using the outdated Socket 7 platform, which had been around for years at this point, and uh, it had quite a number of limitations. You know, even though this is technically a Super Socket 7 system, there are still quite a number of limitations. So for our graphics, we have the onboard SIS 530 uh, integrated graphics. So it's just the integrated graphics on the chipset. Um, it identifies as an SIS 620 in Device Manager for some reason. I don't know why. Now I think that the onboard graphics are based off of the SIS 6326, which was a not great graphics chip, that was, I think, well over a year old by this point. I think it came out in like early 1998, but I'm not entirely sure. So we already have a not good plus now extremely outdated graphics chip as our, you know, main graphics. We don't have anything else. We can't afford anything else. For RAM, we have 64 megabytes of PC100 SD RAM. Uh, not the worst. It... I think you could have still gotten machines with like 32 megs of RAM at this time, but 64 still really isn't a lot, especially when you consider we're running Windows 98 SE on this thing. And uh, this is another thing you kind of learn about, uh, kind of learn about Windows 98 when you run it on an old system like this, is uh, it sucks. Windows 98 kind of sucks. It is extremely heavy on especially low RAM systems, but as well as we don't have the best CPU in the world, 
either, but more so the RAM. Uh, 98 takes up a huge chunk of that RAM uh, because of the IE shell, and especially if you enable active desktop, whew, it sucks up a lot of RAM. So yeah, our RAM situation could be worse, but it's also far from great. Uh, 128 megs would really help this system out a lot. As for sound, we just have the onboard integrated sound, which I think is an ESS chip. It's just a basic generic sound chip, nothing special. And uh, as you can probably see, uh, the power supply is uh, definitely not period correct. Uh, I went ahead and swapped it out with a more modern one because uh, I really don't trust uh, the one that it came with. This is it. It's like some cheap, like, 100 watt power supply. I super don't trust it anymore, especially because I did test the 12 volt rail on it, and it was only outputting 11 volts, so, you know, who knows how, mu how much longer this thing has before it completely, you know, blows up or something, I don't know. So yeah, I went ahead and replaced it just for uh, peace of mind, so we don't potentially, you know, kill the system. Then of course on the front, you know, we got our standard, you know, three and a half inch floppy drive, and a 40 speed CD-ROM, which would have been, you know, reasonably decent for the time. It's no CD burner, but, you know, still would have been decent. Then the last thing, which is probably the only actually, like, pretty decent for the time thing in the system, is a 13 gigabyte uh, Fujitsu hard drive. Uh, 13 gigs, doesn't seem like a lot, but from what I can tell, actually that wasn't too bad of a size for the time. Um, so yeah, you actually got a pretty decent amount of storage. You can install quite a few games and applications on there, so uh, it's not too bad. And it's a Fujitsu drive, and I love Fujitsu drives, so that makes it even better. And I uh, figured I'd go ahead and just show you the port situation on the back. I'm too lazy to unplug everything, so uh, you can just deal with that. You get power supply. PS2, we actually do have USB, USB 1 port, and there is another one on the front, which uh, it's actually kind of unique for the time. Uh, their front panel USB wasn't a super common thing at the time, so it's pretty cool. And you know, we got generic serial, parallel, there's our VGA, game port, so sound chip does support game port. Then um, you got your audio and then your PCI slots. So now I know what you're probably saying. NTG, this isn't a gaming computer. You're showing us an office computer. Go, go get us a... Go show us a budget gaming computer for the time. This is the budget gaming computer from the time. Like, this kind of is the budget gaming computer. I mean, this is what most people could afford. Even a budget gaming computer would have been way more than what you would have spent on a system like this. Now, I don't have exact pricing for this system, Trust me, I looked. There doesn't seem to be very good records of these old machines because literally no one cares. But I mean, back then, you only had one computer in the house. Maybe if you were lucky, your parents had like a laptop for, you know, they used for work, but typically you had one desktop. That was it. That was all, that was the only computer you had, uh, unless you kept like your old computer and you like, just like passed it down through the family or something. But, you know, this was, the only modern, you know, up-to-date computer you'd have. And you think you're going to convince your parents to spend, you know, hundreds of more dollars just to get a better system so that you can play Unreal Tournament with your friends? No, they're going to go tell you to play on the PlayStation. They're not going to spend you know, hundreds of more dollars. This is already, like, you know, probably, like, I don't know what, maybe eight, nine hundred dollars maybe at the time? Especially with the monitor, you know. I know you could get, like, e-machines for way less, but I don't think they came with a monitor. So... You know, you were spending quite a hefty chunk of money on a system like this. So, you know, you were going to have to make do with it. So, you know, if you wanted to play PC games, you were going to play them on this. Even if they didn't run well, this was all you had, you know. You think you can play Half-Life on your PlayStation? Eh, wrong. No, you can't. So I think it's time we boot this sucker up. And, you know, we take a look at what the gaming performance is actually like on this thing. All right, so go ahead. Boot up the system. And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the, uh, the onboard video, uh, sure, system RAM. So, uh, there's 8 megs of our RAM gone. That's fun. And, uh, yeah, I know the CMOS battery's dead. Um, I don't have any extras on hand to replace it with, so, uh, you can just deal with that. What is it finding for drivers? What? 
Printer port? What? Heh. It's always been installed. What are you talking about? We're booted into Windows 98. And, uh... So, uh, this isn't the install of 98 I wanted to put on here. I actually do have... I do have the restore CD for this computer, which uh, looks terrible in the lighting, uh, but I actually did get this to work a total of one time. Uh, got it to work, worked fine, and then I decided to update the BIOS of the computer, and for whatever reason, the disk thinks it's uh, not a... Uh, doesn't think it's an NEC computer anymore for some reason. So, you know, that's fun. So uh, on that install, it had a ton of just junk on it, literally like over a gig of like kind of worthless applications, to be honest. Like, there was a couple things, like Microsoft Works, that would have been kind of useful. There's, like, a some, like, kind of crappy antivirus that would, again, load on startup, so you'd be sucking up even more of your RAM. Uh, so fun. So, you know. You can kind of just see, like, yeah, it took that long to load. Like, you can see kind of just how long it takes to kind of, like, load between, like, different folders and stuff. Again, it's kind of a RAM thing. Yeah, because, again, Windows 98 is actually kind of not great on systems like this. 95 would have been way better. So that's basically our Windows install. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and switch over to uh, uh, the benchmarks, which I've gone ahead and pre-recorded. And uh, it's not great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really not great. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start off with Quake. Uh, this is the original DOS version, uh, running at 320 by 200, so just the standard resolution for Quake. Uh, we get 64.7 FPS, so uh, not great. And uh, remember, this would have been a three-year-old game uh, at the time the, this computer came out. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. You'd hope it would run better, but again, that's just how our CPU is. And I went ahead and switched over to uh, 640 by 480, and uh, it is far less playable. Uh, we get 17.7 FPS, so uh, yeah, that's uh, it's not great. It's kind of playable if you like shrink the window down some, but you shrink the window down some, you might as well have just played in the lower resolution to begin with. So yeah, 640 by 480 and Quake not not really that playable. So then I decided to switch over to uh, WinQuake, because, I mean, who wants to have to boot into DOS every time you want to play Quake? I mean, you want to play it in Windows, so we're going to use WinQuake. And uh, same 320 by 200 resolution in WinQuake, uh, we get 53.6 FPS. So, uh, yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of overhead just because we're running in Windows. Uh, Windows adds a lot of overhead that DOS simply doesn't have. So, yeah, if you were going to play Quake, you'd probably want to boot into DOS just to get that little bit of extra performance. But now something interesting is switching over to 640x480, our performance actually increases with WinQuake up to 22.2 FPS, you know, uh, up from 17.7 from the uh, DOS version. So uh, quite interesting. Not entirely sure why that's happening, but I'd have to guess that it's because Windows has proper drivers for the uh, video card, where uh, DOS doesn't. I imagine the driver optimizations in Windows is actually helping us here. Still not super playable, but you could play it like that. But again, not really smooth. So you'd want to you'd want to play it in uh, in DOS basically. And for our last Quake test, uh, went ahead and tried GL Quake since we do have a 3D capable chip in our computer. Um, and at 320 by 240 which is the lowest resolution you can select, uh, it crashed. It just locked up the entire computer. <laughs> so uh, things are already not looking great for, uh, for a video card. So then I decided to try a 640x480 just to see what happened. And uh, this time it actually did load. Um, but as you can see, uh, oh, it, it, uh, it didn't render correctly at all. And uh, crashed after like a few seconds. So yeah, GL Quake, not playable at all on this computer. All right, so switching over to Quake 2, uh, is running at 320 by 240, uh, just in software rendering. 
uh, we get 27.3 FPS. So, actually pretty reasonable. If you uh, shrunk the screen size down a little bit, you could probably get over 30 FPS, which would actually be a reasonably playable experience. Not amazing, but you could play it. Now, this is with the 3D Now patch installed, which helps with performance on CPUs that uh, have 3D Now, which our CPU does, so uh, we're going to take advantage of that. So switching over to OpenGL at 640x480, we get 7.8 FPS. Yeah, it's really not playable. It's having a real hard time playing playing it in, in uh, this resolution with OpenGL. It'd probably run faster in software rendering at 640x480, but uh, I didn't bother testing it. So then I tried to uh, run it in uh, 320x240 in OpenGL, and for whatever reason, the game refused to uh, run in full screen at this resolution, so it had to run in a window. But uh, still, it got 15.3 FPS, so that uh, is an improvement over 640x480, but still not great. You'd really want to play this in software mode. So yeah, our video chip is actually uh, seems to be worse than our CPU so far at uh, rendering stuff, so looks like we might have to just run everything else in software mode from this point on. So for Half-Life, I had to run it in software mode because I couldn't get uh, Direct3D or OpenGL to work properly. Um, I was running at 400 by 300 which is the lowest resolution that uh, my version of the game supports. I'm pretty sure there's other versions that support 320 by 240 and I tried to force that resolution, but I just couldn't get it to work for whatever reason. And uh, this is with the screen shrunken down quite a bit, and uh, we're getting between 20 and 30 FPS on average. So yeah, you could probably play the early levels okay, but I don't think you could really play too many of the later areas without it really dropping in performance too much to the point of just really being unplayable. So you could play Half-Life on this computer back in the day, but it really would not have been a great experience. I decided to try out a Need for Speed High Stakes uh, just because I had it and it's from 1999, so it's a fairly good fit for our computer. And uh, in Direct 3D, we're getting about 12 FPS average, uh, as with most of the settings turned down. Uh, so, yeah, not great. It It's really not playable. So, um, I also tried software rendering and... Uh, also with the settings down really low, and uh, I think both resolutions were 320 by 200 but uh, I'm not entirely sure. I don't exactly remember, and I didn't write it down, so uh, yay for me not keeping track of things. But uh, the software mode was about the same performance as Direct3D, so again, the game's just not really that playable on this computer. Alright, so for our last game, uh, we have Unreal. Uh, just Regular Unreal with the latest patch, not Unreal Gold. Um, so in Direct 3D, at 320 by 200 uh, we get 19.1 FPS average in the, uh, just in the uh, Flight Castle demo. And uh, it had some weird, like, kind of glitchy textures in certain areas, and uh, it also had this weird, like, wavy effect where it, everything just kind of, like, looked distorted, especially, like, in the menus and stuff. So running it at software, 320 by 200, uh, with I decided to leave volumetric lighting on. Uh, it has 25.3 FPS in software mode, and that's not with the screen shrunken at all. So software mode is just flat out better than uh, 3D rendering, or uh, sorry, hardware rendering in this game. Then I decided to turn off uh, volumetric lighting just to see if there was any noticeable performance difference and. Uh, we gained 1 FPS, so it went up to 26.3. So if you shrunk the screen down, again, Unreal, probably playable, in, like on easy, in like the early levels, but not a super great experience. Alright, so for just one bonus benchmark, I decided to run 3D Mark 99. Now, I fully expected this benchmark to not render correctly, or to just flat out crash on this computer, but surprisingly, it actually completed the test just fine, and it even uh, seemed to render mostly correctly. I didn't notice any major uh, rendering problems. 
doesn't mean the score was very good, because uh, we got a 3D Mark score of 554, which is uh, not great. And uh, we got a CPU Mark score of 4915. So pretty poor scores, as you would expect from such a terrible, uh, such a ter terrible video chip. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was just thought it was interesting that it actually ran okay, especially considering that I've had problems with other games. All right, so what did we really learn from this? Well, we learned that uh, this computer sucks for gaming. Not really a surprise, kind of expected that, but it kind of goes to show that PC gaming wasn't this amazing thing that everybody uh, thinks that it was, at least for most people. Sure you could have a, an amazing gaming experience uh, in 1999. If you got like a Pentium 3 and a Voodoo 3, you'd be having a grand old time uh, if you could afford it. But uh, as you can see, this is what most people probably would have had. Uh, give or take, you know, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse. It is just kind of a generalization, of course. See, I think it's kind of important that we look more at what history was actually like rather than uh, this sort of glorified view of it because you know the the high-end hardware did exist people could afford it but not everyone could and this is more representative of what people actually would have had and that's why i think it's important to uh kind of document it kind of show what it was really like so yeah i guess that's gonna end it here for this video uh thanks for watching and uh Hope you have a good one.